So is the way you're practicing actually helping you improve? Now, the biggest challenge for amateurs is that they can't spend a lot of time on the court, right? Like, unlike juniors or pros like me, we spend countless hours on court every week uh, developing our skills. But for you guys, maybe you're playing once a week, twice a week. How can you make that hour or two more meaningful that you're actually developing your skills that will translate into good match play. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your practice sessions. If you are new to My Tennis HQ, we do tennis lessons, racket reviews, practices with pro players, and tennis content you won't find anywhere else. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button. There are two problems that I see with amateurs practicing that I notice all the time. So the first mistake I see is that they'll step on the court, hit like two mediocre rallies from the middle, and they'll immediately go into playing points. And they'll just play points for an hour and a half mindlessly, not really, without really having a goal set for that practice hour. And then the second thing they do is that they'll set up their ball machine or something on the other side, and they'll just sit in a corner without moving their feet, just hitting like, a thousand balls the same way without having any goal besides maybe making the ball but not necessarily working on developing a skill that will translate into the match you might have like a hitch on your back end or forehand you might have something like a bad habit and now you're just training that bad habit over and over by yourself but now if you want those skills to really translate into good match play your practice needs to be goal oriented you have to be have a purpose every time you're on the court and the best way for you to do this is to make a game out of everything literally just make a game out of everything you're doing on the court um, have challenges like you have to challenge yourself into completing a task here on the court because it adds a little bit of pressure and it's going to make it make it much easier for you to then replicate your training during the match so for example, if I wanted to work on Gustavo's forehand inside out, right? Like maybe I'll start nice and easy. I'm just gonna feed him forehands there. He's gonna run around, hit them inside out, right? Let's do it. Just a few inside out forehands are gonna run around, hit, maybe find his range right now. You know, find a, the, the footwork, everything that he needs to do. He's gonna hit some forehands inside out. For a little bit, this is great. You know, he needs to do this. A couple more, here we go, one more. All right, great, perfect. So we can start there, but that's not necessary, at least at his level. Remember, it's whatever level you are, you just gotta think about your level, how can you challenge yourself. For his level, this is not that challenging. He can make a bunch of balls there, right? So if I wanted to make it a little bit more challenging, a little bit more of a game, so what I'll do, I'll create a nice target area here, right? Like now it's a little bit more challenging. I want him to hit the balls in there. And let's say, we want to get a, again, make it a game, make it more challenging. I'm going to say, hey, I want seven out of 10 balls in here. And we only stop this drill when you get seven out of 10. Now he has a little bit of more pressure. He has a, a smaller target and he's going to have to figure this out. So let's do this. All right. So try to go seven out of 10 into that target area. Here you go. One. The ball's a little bit dead. Two. Nice. Three, good, there you go. Now a little bit more goal oriented. See, he's having to figure out how to hit it there. That's three out of four. Three out of five. Nice. Four out of six. Nice, five out of seven. Five out of eight. Ooh. Five out of nine. Nice, all right, six out of 10. That's a good start. That's a pretty good start. Now I can do it again and I can get to seven, I can do eight and you can get creative with it, right? So let's say you have your ball machine sending the same ball and you're working on your forehand inside out. Maybe you have you and a friend and you try to do this. Who can put more balls into the tar target? It makes it a little bit more challenging, a little bit more competition. The mistakes, not even mistakes, if he doesn't hit the target, is, it was actually not good enough. So he's gonna push himself to make that ball better. And I think that's, a, that's such a, an easier way uh, to, to improve. In the spirit of gamification, a big shout out to today's video sponsor, Tennis Clash, which is a free mobile PvP tennis game with great graphics and fun playing experience. Tennis Clash has over 60 million players worldwide and over a million daily active users. The people love it and their App Store ratings show it. This year, Tennis Clash is partnering up with Roland Garros and they will launch special in-game tournaments with amazing prizes. They're giving two paid expenses trips 
to Paris in a 5,000 euros prize for the grand final winner. So make sure you download it for free from the links in the description below to support my channel and get a chance of winning 5,000 euros. Let's play a, a match here. Um, first, finding a match is super easy. Uh, the ranking system is going to pair you up with someone around your level. Um, so you just play a match. Uh, gameplay is also super simple and intuitive. Uh, you just swipe in the direction you want to hit the ball. Um, the faster you swipe, the faster the ball goes. But obviously you have a little bit less control. So you gotta be play smart. To win the 5,000 euros, you can just swipe. You're gonna have to recover back to the middle. You do that by tapping in the area of the court that you want your player to recover. Uh, you always gotta make sure you recover back to the middle. I talk about that in my videos. I can choose different characters, decide what ability I wanna focus on, forehand, backhand, agility. For me, probably the backhand side, always. And you can also invite your friends to play the game with you. So download Tennis Clash for free from the links in the description below to support my channel, get a chance of winning a paid expenses trip to Paris and 5,000 euros. Good luck and I'll see you. And the last part of it is trying to put that into a match situation. It's a point situation, right? Like, so for example, we just worked on the on the forehand inside out for a little bit. Now let's play points where Gustavo starts by hitting a forehand inside out and we play it out, right? So I'll feed him towards the back and corner. He'll run around, hit a forehand inside out and we'll play it out. So we already try to implement what we're training into a match situation, okay? Here we go. Oh yeah. Good point. So you see, we're very goal oriented. He wants to work on that first forehand inside out. Obviously, after that, the point's gonna start. We're just gonna play the point out, but he's gonna have that repetition. Again, goal oriented forehand inside out to train to start. Nice. Here we go. One more point. Gotta do a little bit more with that forehand. Come on. There you go. There we go, last one. And you see, as we do this, you know, if the, the one before that wasn't necessarily a great forehand inside out, he needs to, he needs to think about it. So, okay, next one needs to be a little bit better. Need to be more focus driven. Maybe think about the target I had before. Nice ball. Ah, come on, get under there. There we go. All right, and you can literally do this with whatever you do on the court, right? Let's say we're working on consistency. Now I'm gonna rally down the middle here with Gustavo. Instead of just rallying through the middle, we'll just play a tiebreaker to seven just through the middle where we can't hit winners. We're just having to outstead each other, right? So just rally to the middle, through the middle. We play the point out like we do in practice. We're just here through the middle, just a consistency drill. Okay, no winners. I'm gonna play a point like that. And we're just gonna have to out rally each other, outlast each other. Oh, come on, cover. All right, I'm not gonna lose a consistency drill anymore. See, nothing I'm doing is really bothering him. So I'm gonna start playing around with something. Let's see if I can hit a ball that forces him to miss. Play around with my speed. Yeah. Let's go. All right, so see, I can train a lot of things. Now let's say we wanna take a, a, a step further even. So we're working on consistency and depth, right? So now we're gonna play a point. Service line is out, okay? Got to, it has to land past the service line. Same goal here. Consistency, a little bit more depth. Here we go. Ooh, oh, close. All right, so that adds a whole new layer. A little bit of pressure. Targets are a little bit smaller. And again, th those skills will translate more because you're already, I'm already playing with a little bit more pressure here. 
Now let's say I'm trying to work on changing directions. Maybe I'm not going to start with points this time. Maybe we're not at the level yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to have make seven out of ten change of direction successfully, right? So let's say uh, we just do. He's gonna, only going to go cross. I'm going to go one back and cross, and one back and line. So that's one. I mean, I have to do that seven out of ten times. Let's see if you can challenge yourself into that that's two and so on and so forth now you can do again depends on your level doesn't really matter maybe you can make that even tougher put a target there has to be seven out of ten into a target like we did earlier maybe we just go into points now so let's say you feed i go cross you go cross i go line we play it out okay so now we're implemented into match play cross he goes cross i go line we play it out now All right, so now you add, again, another layer to practice. It's like we start with a smaller goal. Okay, we have to make a cross and a line, and then the points open. Semi-open points are really important because then you're actually training into a match situation what you actually want to develop as a skill, right? Again, it could be inside out, let's say slices. Okay, instead of just going, just hitting a bunch of slices, let's play a little game. We just play cross court. Just slice to slice, just slices. We're gonna play a little game here, cross court, slice to slice. And we have to play around, okay? Oh, come on. Yeah, as long as that's fine, that's, that's a point for you. Here we go, do it again. Oh my God, that's a good ball. There you go, that's too good. And now all of a sudden I'm actually, have a little bit of pressure. Now again, there are unlimited ways for you to do this, right? I can cover them all because this video will be seven hours long. I'm actually curious to know about your favorite games. Leave a comment down below with the games that you like to play every time you're on the court. But in general, the idea is to just have that goal-oriented mind, regardless of your level. Keep in mind your level. So for example, for me, I want to go and train my first serve. I'm going to maybe put a target there and okay, I in 20 serves, I need to hit it five times or ten times whatever it is right but maybe for you you're just learning how to serve you just want to keep the serve in maybe you go on the court every time you do little sets of ten right okay i'm gonna work on my second serve okay i want to get there and make sure i can make one okay one out of one two out of two if this is your level then it's fine but it again it gives you a little bit of a goal a little bit of a little bit of tension okay you have to again you have a challenge to complete and that makes it a little bit easier right so if i you know again i want to go just like that okay i'm making it all of a sudden once you can do that without even thinking it's like okay now i'm going to actually hit my second serve into a little bit of a smaller target and i'm going to try to hit that target over and over and over you can do this in so many ways it's so but at least when you're training you have a goal you're focused like we often get the questions like how do pro tennis players train or they want to they want to know if like me and Naomi were doing some magical thing that that made her much better no we, we just are very goal oriented that's how pros train they'll, they'll step on the court is like oh today you know what backing down the line that's that's what we're going to focus we're going to maybe do a little drill progression like I did earlier with the forehand and but we eventually will implement that into point situation and that's how pro players train and, and that's how you can at least think about your training obviously i understand you don't have the time like pros do but to just at least, every time you spend every hour you spend on the court needs to matter okay and if you're more goal oriented you have you challenge yourself into some diff different games then your hour on court is going to be much more productive and it's going to bring a lot better results